uh, my my doctor thought there'd be a whole lot of uh, STDs going around. Didn't understand how careful I was. Look, now that I've got your attention, I, I need your help with something. There's there's some there are some ugly rumors going on about me online, and I need your help squashing them. So. All sorts of people are calling me the Barishnikov of Cunnilingus. And I need you to know, I just don't stoop to that anymore. So if you hear someone, what, just one more person saying, oh, 40, he's the Barishnikov of Cunnilingus. I want you to tell them 40 works very hard. 40 is a very respectable man. Look, I want to be judged on the content of my character, not on the dexterity of my tongue. I, I don't do that anymore. Like it gives me a crank in my neck. So you catch anyone calling me the Barishnikov of Cunnilingus, I just want you to, to just draw them up short and say, 40, like the rest of us, he deserves to be judged on the content of his character, not on the dexterity of his tongue. 40 is a very respectable man. The weather and even a story about a proposed eco-resort got the bikini treatment. Rogers says she was obliged to take these photos to keep her bosses at News Corp happy. If we were told to go and get a, a weather, a generic, I'd say, you know, a weather photo, um, a, a budget story, a family about something, it would always be an attractive woman, a cute kid, um, never, a, never an attractive man, but particularly attractive women were always emphasised. It was a directive to get attractive people to fit that, that met the... Yeah, because guess what? Even women prefer to look at attractive women than they do at uh, attractive men or unattractive women or unattractive men. Right? This is... This is the nature of reality. And yeah, I mean, I admit, I am here fighting against reality when I'm just trying to squash all these rumors that I'm like the male, the, the Mikhail Barishnikov of Cunnilingus. Yeah, I'm, I'm fighting against a rising tud of online innuendo and gossip and all sorts of tawdry conversations. And, and maybe I'm just fighting reality and saying, stop, enough. I just want to be judged on the contents of my character. I, I, I don't appreciate being objectified. Like, I read so many books. I'm a thoughtful guy. I'm not just a guy who goes... I, I'm a very respectable man. I don't want to be objectified. I, I, I don't stand up here for, for women to whack off to. All right, I, I just I would just want to put a stop to all this innuendo, this smutty talk about oh, forty, he's just you know an amazing Lothario, or I've never known a f lover as great as forty, and yeah, I'm, I'm kicking against the tide, right? I, I'm building a dike against the rising tide. I, 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 I'm protesting against reality. I know people are going to talk, but but how do you feel after all the books I've read? After all the hard work that I, I've put in, and I just get reduced to... How do you think that makes me feel? I'm a spiritual being. I'm not just a sexual being. I, I walk hand in hand with the creator of the universe. I, I converted. I went through a very rigorous program to, to join God's chosen people. I don't want to be objectified just, just, just as like some some creature that women can use for their amusement. Uh, I mean, it's like, it's like I'm going to take my whole identity, all right? I am a spiritual being. I am a loving being. I've got male friends. I've got female friends. I'm a, I'm a serious intellectual. I'm a, I'm a live streamer. How do you think I like being reduced to just my kind of lingus skills? Like, as so, oh, there's one act. There's just one sexual act. And that sums up everything you need to know about 40. How do you think that makes me feel? It's not good for it's not good for the women who think this either, right? To just you know objectify and boil people's identity down to just you know one sexual act. I don't get that. I know a lot of people they'll go on marches and they want the world to know their identity based on you know one type of sexual act that they like to perform. But you're never going to see me marching down the street for a kind of lingus pride parade, all right? Have you ever seen me marching down the street, carrying signs, wearing colorful clothing, participating in cunnilingus pride? No, it's not something I want to talk about. I don't even want you to bring it up. If, if you run into me on the street, I, I don't, don't bring it up. If we're at a party, 
Like, I, I don't want you going around telling women, oh, Forty's got these you know, amazing Mikhail Baryshnikov, you know, talents that are kind of lingus. I, I don't want to be reduced like that. I'm a child of God. I have a mother and a father. I have a brother and a sister. I am a friend. I'm a 12-step sponsor, right? I'm a spiritual seeker. I, I thirst after knowledge. I thirst after righteousness, right? I want to lead a deeply meaningful life, right? The, the, the words that I say now, I, I, I expect they're going to echo down through eternity and, and to, to put in all this hard work, put in, to go through 10 years of psychotherapy, to participate in five different 12-step programs, Right, to, to march through the 12 steps, do all that hard work, to become this ascendant spiritual master that I am today, to all those years of yoga, and then you're just going to boil me down to the, the Barishnikov of, of Kanalingus? It's so hurtful. It's so hurtful. How do you think I feel walking down the street and I see people tittering and, and, and pointing and, and, and gossiping? I mean, do, do you think, how do you think that makes me feel? Dennis Dale, how are you, sir? Very good. I, I've never called you adept at any sexual maneuver. So, thank you, Dennis. I mean, I don't like to be objectified like that. No. I, I, I'm God, like a he's totality. thoroughly inept. I've, I've heard it. He, he, he's completely without a clue. Does that make you feel better? Yeah, and I mean, I'm not the type of guy who likes to talk about himself. I mean, yeah, I, I, I just want to stay on the other great ideas. But I don't understand people like marching in a parade. And saying, you know, my identity is wrapped up in this one sex sexual act. Right. I mean, there there are probably some sexual acts that that you quite enjoy, but would you go marching down the street holding a sign saying, right, you know, I'm a rump rover, or I don't know what, <laughs> I, I don't know your thing. I don't judge, but I no. mean, I don't I don't get summing up your whole totality based on one sexual act you like to do. No, uh, I you know I take no pleasure in sex at all. <laughs> but i mean it just seems weird to me that people identify you know i'm a gay man like why would yeah. you why would that be how you want to present yourself to the world that just does not make any sense to me sodomy defines me right yeah i take great pride in it yeah i don't get it but you know what got you on this tangent to i i haven't seen the rumors myself I just, I don't know. I just get, I just get, I get to get a little tired of being, being objectified that way. I mean, yeah. after I'm a 54 year old man, Dennis, like I, yeah. I'm no longer the sexual athlete that I was in my twenties. I mean, I've got a lot of wisdom and, and, and I think I, I'm like, like more spiritually, you know, clarified and purified. I've got, I've got you know, much more intention that, that I can, I can bring now, but, uh, oh, I, I was just yeah. thinking, Here's what I was thinking about. I was reading a book on psychoanalysis, and uh, it's called Rational Perspectives on the Body. So let me just drop one thing on you. It, it really, really got me going, and uh, it's it's deep here. But anyway, this yeah. one psychoanalyst says a, a good deal of psychological problems, such as narcissism, borderline personality disorder, uh, addictions, eating disorders... Uh, psychosomatic disorders. So a psychosomatic disorder is like when I'm doing work that I don't enjoy, I often start to get shoulder pain and back pain and headaches. And then as soon as I wa walk away from it, you know, as soon as I'm done, all that pain just goes away. So it only comes at me when I'm doing something I don't enjoy. Do you, do you experience that? I can't say that I have. Uh, no. But then so I'm when, lazy. I hardly ever work. When, when you're doing work that you don't enjoy and doesn't have any meaning to you, you don't feel an increased sense of lack of ease in your body, headaches, pain, nothing like There's that? A, a decreased concentration. I get restless and I want to get up and, and it's hard to stay concentrated on stuff I don't like. But no, I don't like get a crick in the neck or anything. Okay. Yeah, yeah I noticed. Like, for me, it's the right shoulder blade. That just starts. That just starts hurting. Whenever I'm doing something that I'm not into, really? I mean, not not right away, but maybe three hours in. And, and three hours just, in, yeah, and then it just gets worse and worse and worse, and then it starts to you know move to a headache, and my neck, my neck hurts, and then my more of my back hurts. If I'm not enjoying what I'm doing, I'm like, well, uh, if 
three hours into kind of linguists, that's going to happen. I mean, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you were talking about other things. I'm sorry. No, no. I yeah. mean, like they just line them up for me because like the reputation is spread far and wide. I mean, and, and so it's like, I mean, I mean, it's is there tiring. a waiting list. It's tiring yeah. to satisfy like 20 women at a time. It's like they just line them up as, as though I'm just like some kind of piece of meat. Simultaneously or? Well, serially? no, it's like one yeah. at a time. You know, yeah. I, I, I'm someone I, like when I'm with someone, Dennis, I, I'm with them 100%. I'm Great. not I'm not thinking about the next 18. Like, How did you ever end up single is what I'm wondering. Uh, well, here, I, I found out the answer. So. It's in psychoanalysis. So this this argument is that a good deal of psychological problems are the result of an inability to maintain appropriate tension between two perspectives on the self. So this is talking about the subjective sense of oneself and the objective. So the subjective is that's where we're at, we're at the most of the time. We're just thinking about our needs, our desires, what we want to say, what we want to feel. Right, that's the subjective sense of self. Then the objective sense of self is when you stand outside of yourself and you you think, okay, how is this going to appear? Like I'm a 54 year old bachelor. Uh, I've you know led this uh, kind of weird life, and here I'm going off on things that are going to make you know very little sense to much of the audience. So. So most of the time when I'm talking, I've got to be in like the subjective sense of myself. I'm not really thinking about your needs, Dennis. You know, I'm thinking about yes. what I want to say. But what about to, my needs? Yeah, but to carry on a a fruitful conversation with you, I need to get out of myself at times yeah. and and take into consideration. Okay, what's going on with Dennis? Like, has his cat just died? Is you know Dennis going through a moving? That can be quite, uh, you know, arduous or dislocating. Um, I've hardly talked to Dennis the last three years. Uh, you know, what are topics I that thought. Dennis are likely to to talk about? Like, I, I need to, and then is the chat enjoying it? Is this like a fruitful topic of conversation? Is this going to bring viewers? Is this going to bring income? Should I split the income 50-50? Should I split it 60-40? Like, that's like an object. And then how will this look if this is recorded and say just, you know, 20 seconds of it is snipped and then put all over the internet to say, you know, look forward to crazy man. So that's an objective sense of self versus subjective. So the, the theory that I'm working on is that the difference between being having a life that works and a life that doesn't work is being able to move from being in a subjective sense of self. So all you're thinking about is yourself 99.9% .9 of the time to maybe just 99.0% of the time. So maybe... In other words, you put 10 times as much time as comes naturally into thinking objectively. Like, how will this, how will my words come across? How will other people experience this? Uh, what, you know, what will, what will the other person think? What will be their likely reaction? So if we can just move into a little bit more of outside of our own perspective, our own subjective sense of self into taking a little more consideration of where other people are coming from or what our words and deeds look like to people who are not invested one way or another, that we're going to have a more effective life. So that's seriously what I've been thinking about the last few days. Do you, do you have any thoughts on any of that? Yeah. Well, it's the same issue with being a good lover, I guess, right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's, just, it's the same problem. I don't know if true objectivity is possible. Yeah, I think about, I've thought about this a lot. And, and I realized even when I'm trying to be objective and I'm thinking about how I come off, it's really kind of subjective because I'm still thinking about my image. And I think in a way it's almost, I, there's some kind of somewhere in between you have to be, um, that you're not thinking about how you look, but you're thinking about what the other person needs, you know, but I, I can never get away from com completely away from subjectivity, you know? And no, you don't want to, but you have to have the capacity, I think, to be effective in life yeah. to to where you effortlessly move in and out of your subjective sense and then into an objective sense where you yeah. try to figure out, you know, how would a third party see or understand you know, what's going on? So, for example, like I've I've had a wealth of erotic experiences. I'm not sure if I've ever spoken to you about them, <laughs> but like in some of 
because of my erotic experiences, I would I would like have my girlfriend. I'd say to her, I want you to play my therapist. Okay, and so just speak to me as though you were my therapist, and I'll speak to you like my patient. Then we'll just take things from there. So we'd start off, and she'd speak to me like my therapist, and I'd. And then we take things there. So we would play a game, and that game would be really exciting to me. But that game would cease to be exciting to me if I ever switched out of this subjective experience to an objective perspective. It's like, you know, look, why on earth are you playing this ridiculous game? Like, why do you have to play some, some you know, role-playing game to get excited about having sex with your girlfriend? Like, that would just kill the excitement. Yeah, it's almost a desecration. I right. mean of the act if if you view sex as something special and, and spiritual you know any other role-playing games you engaged in oh. like, i'll be the, i'll be your therapist <laughs> yeah. not, in, not in a sex role play way just i'm safely over here so <laughs> yeah well well my, my real therapist said that i tended to pursue intensity rather than intimacy so i was so ah. much into the role-playing games so it was interesting. Almost all my role-playing games, it, almost everything that was like sexually exciting for me, it was that I would have power. And then for my girlfriends who were powerful in the real world, for them, what was most exciting was to have no power. So in, in the real world, I genuinely felt to have little power. And so for sexual fantasy fuel, I would have to think about how I had you know, enormous power because in my real life, that was so lacking. For my girlfriends who were running businesses, had responsibilities. For them, it was really exciting to let go of the, their real world power and imagine themselves as powerless. You think that's more uh, a female thing? Mm, because yeah, so, plenty, so men plenty of guys be, like mm -hmm. dominatrixes, you know, plenty of guys will go do that. I never understood it, but. Yeah, maybe it's more a female thing. They just need to let go of that. It's, like, it's got to be a tremendous strain uh, for a woman to be in, in, in authority or something like that. Sometimes she just wants to be carried off. Right. I notice women really don't like accountability and responsibility. So the idea of having no power it comes with having no accountability and no responsibility. And that seems very appealing to a lot of women liberating yeah have you noticed that uh no <laughs> my my sex life was so boring i i just feel yeah when i hear you talk i just realize how boring my <laughs> sexual proclivities and everything else are but i think it's a, it's a it's an excuse to do things maybe it's there's shame still you know and if you feel like well i have no power then i'm relieved of all of this pressure about how to act um, whatever's left of sexual shame in our society, you know, it's an excuse. But the role playing, do you find that it's maybe comes toward the end of a relationship? Maybe it signals the end. Mm, no, but it, that's not completely disconnected either. So I, I read somewhere that the half life of a sexual relationship tends to be about six weeks. So about six really? weeks into a sexual relationship, it will tend to be half as intense as it was at the beginning. So that that does ring true. So I would generally, genuinely, generally speaking, not engage in much role playing in the first couple of months of a right. relationship. You know, it's spicing things up. Yeah. And when I think of that, I think, oh, that means there's problems. The only yeah. re real solution is to to actually to make sex less important, you know, and if you're going to be married for a long period of time, it's ridiculous to think you're going to be hot for each other on the same level years on down the road, right? Right. A, a good, a good important part about sex is that it's it tends to reveal truth. Like if, if you, it, it, once you're tired of having sex with your partner, that's usually a pretty powerful and painful truth about the the state of the relationship. Not just for one day, but if week in, week out, you have lost all interest in having sex with your partner. That is pretty close to a death knell for a relationship, I would say. Yeah. Uh, relationships are impossible now because we all think it's supposed to be like that throughout and, and it's so easy to stray. I mean, I think the, the old timers had the right idea, like the French, where you know you had a wife and a mistress and they were separate and you didn't leave your, your wife for your mistress. That was ridiculous. 
you know, because marriage was not about sex primarily, really. Right, but but there's a difference. But like in, in the first year of a relationship, you're going to have more sex than in the next yeah. forty years if 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 you're you're married. But what's the these? Right, I mean, say, 